Water is the most valuable resource on Earth. Life couldn't exist without it. But only a fraction of Earth's water is fresh water, and of that, about 70% is locked up in ice and glaciers and permanent snow. However, seasonal snow is also a very important part of Earth's water cycle, and NASA scientists are taking a closer look at snow to better understand its relationship to available liquid water. And here to talk to us about that today is Dr. Dahlia Kirschenbaum, who is a research scientist at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. So first of all, can you tell me what NASA hopes to learn by studying snow and how it changes seasonally and over time? NASA has a global fleet of Earth-observing Earth satellites that are looking at everything from our atmospheres to our oceans, even in our backyard, estimating snow. And so snow cover can vary seasonally from month to month and even year to year. And an interesting thing we've seen is, you know, for example, in the Sierra Nevadas out in California, we've seen how the snowpack just two years ago was only quarter of what it usually is. And this year we've seen 180% of normal. And understanding how much water is stored there is vital for monitoring our freshwater resources. So in what parts of the United States is NASA going to be looking at snow cover? So, you know, we've been able to observe snow cover from space for decades, and that's globally. But we have a new field campaign right now going on in Colorado, where we're looking at snow depth, how much water is, snored, is stored in the snowpack. And that is really important for forecasting river flows, for example, or even, you know, how much water we have um, to irrigate our crops. So the SnowX campaign happening right now in uh, Colorado Springs is actually having advanced instruments on board aircraft that are working to use these types of measurements to ultimately put a, an instrument on a future satellite mission where we can look at global snow depth. So how are these studies going to affect the, uh, affect the way that we study, the way that parts of the country and parts of the world that don't see a lot of snow are affected by snowfall? Well, if you go to a local grocery store, for example, nearly half of the produce coming from there, the fruits and the nuts, originated from the Central Valley. And the water used to irrigate those crops actually came from the Sierra Nevada snowpack. And so understanding how much uh, water we have stored in that snowpack is vital for understanding and, and monitoring our crop availability. But that's just part of the picture. You know, a sixth of the world relies on seasonal snowpack and glaciers. So by having a global view, we can better understand these freshwater resources around the world. So what are some of the new methods and technologies that the SnowX program is going to use? Well, the SnowX program is, is looking um, at the ground using advanced capabilities, but we also have satellites in space that are specifically designed to measure falling snow. The Global Precipitation Measurement Mission can look layer by layer, giving us important clues into how we might improve weather forecasting and even understand extreme events. You know, this, the, the past that we see here is actually from a snowstorm in 2015. And, and this gives us clues not only into what's happening in our backyards, but around the world where we might not have such great snow observations. Now, 2016 was the warmest year on record, and 2015 was before that, and then 2014 before that. So how has this affected snowpack overall, and what might be some of the long-term consequences that we could be seeing? Well, I think, I think it's, it's important, important to make, make to uh, understand that you know whether the snowpack from year to year can you know can vary, um, and you know looking at the climate record, that's over a much longer time period. So in addition to the to the um, the temperature, we've seen you know changes in Arctic sea ice shrinking. We've seen sea level rising, as well as changes over the land cover. And so with NASA's Earth observing fleet, you know we're able to look at our weather today, what's happening with the surface temperature, what's happening in our oceans and our ice caps, but also so we can use that information to ultimately look at our, our um, you know, the five-day forecast, but also our climate modeling in the future. And you need that global perspective to really get at our freshwater resources, not just in our backyards, but really around the world. Okay, and where may, uh, where may people be able to go to follow the SnowX program and to find out more about what NASA scientists are doing? If you go to snow.nasa.gov, you can learn about what NASA and its partners are doing to better understand snow, developing new technologies that affect us both here as well as around the world.